Punch Your Crush Army, it's your boy back again to bring you guys the latest and greatest tips to make you guys a better Fortnite player. Listen, it's your motivation guy. I'm taking this to the next level. Hope you guys are ready. Don't give up on me because I'm not giving up on you. Listen, it is our time and it is our moment to be greater than we've ever been before. Not only in this game, but also in life. I want you to be a great Fortnite player, but I want you to be a great person in general, right? I believe in you guys, so just never give up on your dreams. You know, uh, Boney Burbs, Pleasant Park, our favorite fishing spots, like the island really has grown on us, even if at times it doesn't make any drastic changes. However, after a whole year of fishing and crafting and even the introduction of cars, Fortnite has become a quite different beast than it was when we first began. Now, we are all anticipating the changes that might be coming soon. Yes, that is right, guys. Chapter 3 is inevitable, and many are saying it's going to happen at the end of Season 8. So, what do we do in anticipation for this big event? Good question. And, you know, how can we prepare ourselves as competitive gamers for a whole new chapter? Well, we might have a few ideas on the kind of mindset and practice that you should have if you want to transition into a new era of Fortnite. You guys ready for this? Let's get this going. With Chapter 3 around the corner, competitive Fortnite is going to see itself rebooting from the ground up. This means, guys, that unlike prior seasons, the pros are going to have to adjust to the changes more than usual. This makes it the perfect time to jump into the competitive bandwagon. Not only that, but this time, we actually have a heads up that Fortnite is going to be drastically changing. When Chapter 2 rolled around, it caused all sorts of chaos with players questioning if Fortnite had been officially unplugged. Uh, so, you know, the things were said and, and even TV sets were broken as we waited for some, you know, some signs that the game would come back online. Then from the black hole, we got a fresh new take on the game that we had been so used to for so long. And with that came a whole new take on competitive. You know, starting with Season X, we got the first ever FNCS and that quickly became the tournament to look forward to at the end of each season. Not only that, but the community has also evolved to be more competitive and more resourceful. Okay, guys, if you're thinking about making this the chapter where you start your competitive journey, visit ProGuys.com by clicking on the link below for some amazing coaching opportunities. The coaches here at Pro Guys is going to take your game to the next level. I'm telling you right now. All right, so saying goodbye is never easy, especially when you've played on the same map for so long. Like we've grown so accustomed to all of our familiar POIs and the overall structure of the island, right? Even our rotation habits are all based on the current map layout. That doesn't mean we won't be seeing any familiar POIs return. After all, Pleasant Park survived the black hole and has been around the entire chapter. So could one of the main POI from chapter two return? Perhaps, but don't go like expecting it. Go in with the mentality that everything is gonna be different so you don't end up just sticking with the familiar when the island does change. All right, so one good thing about the season transitions is that only some POI tend to really change. This season, we didn't really see many changes at first, but now we have Cube Town and a whole bunch of crash sites. So knowing what we know about chapter changes, we can expect a whole new structure, which is going to require us to learn everything from the ground up. Hopefully, though, you know, with the introduction of a whole new island, it's also going to introduce some interesting biomes to really diversify the look of the map and mechanics that make certain drop spots more interesting. So one interesting map that has been floating around was posted on Reddit, which may or may not be based on actual concepts for what's coming up in chapter three. All right, so take it with a grain of salt though, like because Naruto was also expected back in season six and fans are still waiting for the ninja to show up in any shape or form. Regardless, it is always good to really keep up with the leaks because although many changes don't turn out like we expect them to, there is also some grain of truth, which can really help you anticipate the possible changes. So when chapter two first rolled around, we were introduced to fishing as a gameplay mechanic. Eight seasons later, fishing has become an integral part of Fortnite and a valid strategy for gathering, you know, better healing and status effect items. So it's safe to say that if Epic decides to add something new to the mix, it can have a drastic change in how players choose to tackle their looting and what areas they're going to be mostly attracted to. All right, so just like at the crash site near Pleasant Park, the fact that it has good floor loot and a fishing spot makes it attractive to those who want to get floppers early. So just think for a moment, like if they add a new type of mechanic, like say for example, they add cooking to the mix. You could just imagine how players would react to that. You know, for each items and meat would become more viable and POI where you can obtain the right ingredients for the plate would become hot spots. That's the kind of effect an in-game mechanic can have on a player base. Okay, so, so far we've had leaks, which include a brand new sliding animation. If sliding is introduced, it can improve like movement and even add a whole new layer towards those who want to be great at aiming. Sliding could potentially be used in a variety of different methods, 
It can be used as a way to quickly just duck under a bill without having to stop and crouch into it. It can also be used as a quick way to get up close to an opponent, hit them, and man, just even get behind them. Essentially, it really just makes the movement options of way more smoother. So one of the mistakes that you can make when a game makes such changes is really not understanding how much of an impact it can have on strategy. Strategy, oof, I'm telling you. Like, you don't want to underestimate anything no matter how small. So going into chapter three, expecting these changes in a way to mentally prep for the kind of mindset you need to move forward is so important. All right, so what can we do in terms of training? You know, we all know building isn't going anywhere. As Fortnite's signature mechanic, I mean, it's gonna be hard to imagine a version of the game where building was no longer something that we could do. Also, the core gameplay will always revolve around third-person gunplay. So rest assured, guys, like when Fortnite chapter three comes around, <laughs> there are some definite aspects that are definitely gonna be around. All right, so to get ready for this new change, keep practicing your building techniques on creative and just really continue just working your way towards becoming an AIM legend. Do your editing courses, do your 1v1s, practice build battling, just keep practicing as if you were just simply heading into a new season. Of course, like the competitive aspect for our current season is winding down with the conclusion of FNCS, but that doesn't mean that you can't keep training. So just be sure not to burn yourself out between now and the start of chapter three, because I know how we can get a little extreme right so by keeping up with your training you can make sure that when chapter three does begin like the only thing you really need to focus on from there is really just adjusting to the new mechanics and really learning the new POI. so so don't forget to keep doing your warm-up routines and just working on the skills that you feel that you need some work with all right so with a brand new chapter on the way now you know it might be the perfect time to really start looking into new teams yeah new teams like back before chapter eight began we suggested to you like to really get a new trio together if you planned on just trying to reach the fncs while the format for any future fncs for chapter three is unknown you know it is still best to find someone to really do it with all right so take careful consideration when doing this though like do your current teammates compliment your playstyle? has there been anyone else that you played with that showed promising synergy remember competition is all about having the right combination that eventually takes you to the top i mean there's gonna be times where you get comfortable playing with the same people over and over again i get it and so while this is great you also need to remember that pro players swap teammates all the time you know it's that extra challenge that just really keeps them you know just pushing themselves to even higher levels of skill and not only is this good for competition but this is great for rediscovering you know new strategies and you know learning about the new chapter with someone else I mean, you can always learn about the new additions to the game, such as items and POI and, you know, and mechanics from guides, but strategies and unique ways of using items are all created from players experiencing the game. Like there is no cheat sheet that tells you right off the bat how a new item can be used. You know, that just really all comes from just trying it out. Remember, the good old days of players just fighting the rocket launcher to travel from place to place. Ooh, I mean, uh, it's just not happening. Like the community invented a way of fast traveling simply by playing around with weapons. I, I mean, that's the kind of creativity that will eventually set the groundwork for the new meta. So find someone to bounce ideas off of. You know, two heads are always better than one. I'm telling that right now. So while you're at it, just don't forget that getting a professional coach from Pro Guides is always an option that can help you become a smarter player. Okay, so another thing that you should look into is checking out the latest sensitivities the pros are using. So during the competitive season, you usually want to stick with the sensitivity and just ride with it. However, like now during this time of transition, try experimenting with different settings so you can start practicing and just really getting really used to them. You can take these new settings right into the next chapter so you can focus less on building that muscle memory and focus more on your new rotation. So go out there, man, and explore what the other pros have to really offer. And who knows, like you might be able to get a nice head start when things really start coming back again but your course tell me that's going to be it for today's video just remember that i you know believe in you guys i really do so whatever you're going through wh whatever is happening in your personal life whether it be at work or at school with your family or just with your friends or maybe you're just having a hard time just playing the game in general maybe you're feeling discouraged because you're not really seeing improvement hey you gotta have patience because this is a journey right i mean it's a marathon like you, you just got to keep running you got to keep being consistent because honestly i believe that consistency is key no matter what you're facing no matter what's in your head no matter what's in your heart like you just got to keep going forward take one day at a time hey, if you guys like the video make sure you guys subscribe to the channel and uh connect with me on my instagram at your motivation guy listen we believe in you and uh hey never give up i'll see you soon peace